Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comment section of one of my videos. And for today, we're looking at another land mobile base. And this one is called the Base Runner, which is this thing right here. A large mobile base with an off-centered cockpit, a hangar and everything you need to survive or out and about doing your space engineer's stuff. So I'm going to press F10 and find it in the spawn menu. There it is, the base runner. It is 3,336 large blocks made by someone called Snuggles. Yes, it's an unmodded land vehicle, which does come with a warning that tells you to open up the top hangar doors before reversing the elevator all the way up, or it could cause the whole rover to explode. Which, well, I'm gonna have to try that out, aren't I? But that'll be for later. So let's start by going around the outside, have a little tour of the interior, then we're gonna test out the elevator and the hangar thing and see if we can blow up the whole rover, and then end it with something stupid. So at the very front here, we've got a off-centered cockpit, which has been made out of glass. We've got a lovely view here, plenty of LCD screens. We've got some programmable blocks in there for a few scripts here and there. Yes, I'll come back to that bit later. On the opposite side, we've been replaced by some solar panels, some rocket launchers, and we got this lovely little bumper that sits all the way at the front, made out of steel blocks and blast door edges to make sure if you did bump into anything, it's not going to do too much damage. Behind here, we can see some passages, which are purely there for some decoration, and on our left and right, we've got some spotlights. As we move around the side, we've got three large wheels that sit on both sides, that's more a lovely block work, the little guards that sit above them. We can see we've got some stairs that are coming up and across from some large cargo containers, which are in a bit of a risky area to me. I don't really like having cargo containers near the bottom of a land vehicle, but if that's the only place you can fit them, then that's where they have to go. But bearing that in mind, we are quite high and away from the ground, so it should not be an issue at all. As we move up, we can see a doorway to get in and out. We've got an interior pillar that's actually been used as a pillar. We've got some window blocks. We've got some interior walls with some lights on it. We've got some Gatling turrets, some modules and whatnot, which sit on the refineries and the assemblers. And below here, we can see our large refinery and our wheels. As we move all the way around to the back, we once again got some more lovely block work. And this is our small little hangar. We can put a land vehicle in here, a small mining land vehicle that could easily ride up here, come and connect up or drop stuff up into that connector. But you can, if you really want to, put a small ship in there. So this little ramp here will fold all the way up and we can then close up the hangar door to make sure we're nice and airtight inside. As we come around the side to the opposite, we've got some auction farms with a small little grid pattern holding them in place, like a little cargo rack. And then coming all the way across, we then have the same story as the opposite side. Going up and above past these lovely solar panel setups, which have been done on stairs block. That's a, actually a really neat thing to do. Like that. Looks great. Yes, we come past some turrets. We've got some beacons. We've got another doorway so we can go all the way in and up to the top if you want to do that. And laser antenna, some more turrets. And over here, it looks like we've got a rocket turret that seems to be aiming at something over there. And this is our top hangar door with our elevator that sits down there. So if you were to close this up and launch the elevator up, we should theoretically explode. And towards the back of this vehicle, we've got some more solar panels and auction tanks, which have been nicely set up. We drop down and come underneath. We'll get a better look at what's going on under here. There's our refineries. We can come across to see some lovely window blocks hiding up all those modules. There's our large cargo containers. We've got a large hydrogen tank in there. There's an ore detector. We then have this little thing right here, which I'm not too sure what it is. It looks like a fancy grid with a antenna sticking out of it, which is quite nice. And we've got some window blocks just above there so we can see it from the inside. We've got a connector under there for a small vehicle to drive up and connect up to. And some cargo containers for some quick access while we're on the outside. With that all said and done, let's get into my character and head on into this vehicle. So we can just come across to here, walk up and enter into this door. But let's start at the very back, shall we? Let's go through the hangar. So coming across to here and over to here, we should be able to just hop up onto there and walk into the hangar. 
So we're now in the hangar. We've got a lovely window floor that's very reflective. I do love the reflections on the windows. We've got a lot of LCD screens going around the room. So up here is going to tell us what's going on with our cargo or an ingots. And over here it will tell us the date and the time. Looking up and above as we move around, we've got some fancy lights that are just blinking constantly up there. So that is our elevator. Then walking around to here, we then got a button which will close up the ramp. A button to close up the hangar and then a button to turn the lights on and off. As we walk around here, there's not too much to talk about. It is simply the elevator feature that sits above us. So just walking around to here, we can then come through this airlock door to the main hallway. In this main hallway, we do have a few little bits and bobs in here. So there's the O2H2 generator, and we've got a timer block and air vent up there. And coming through this doorway, we're now in the main part of the land vehicle. Instantly greeted by an interior turret, so be on your best behavior while walking around here. And a lovely glass piece right here so we can see into our little hangar. An auction tank behind some lovely windows. And we've got a button there to control the lights in here. So there we go. Up there we can just see some more lovely block work. And we've got some more signs telling us where we can go. So upstairs will be to the main hallway and downstairs will be to the medical room. But around here, we do have a small seat that allows us to control all the turrets on this thing and all the cameras as well to view around the ship. Coming out of there and walking down to the medical bay area, we can come across these little bits right here. So we've got a small little access panel right there, and we've got a cargo container right there to open and do whatever with. Coming through this doorway right here, we're now in our medical bay with a nice little view outside. We've got our medical bay to respawn on, change our outfits, and another button to control the lights. Looking down here, we can see our little antenna block below us, and coming through this doorway, just come up and around and into here. So this is going to be our main driving area, which is our offset cockpit. We've got another control seat right here, which is left empty. So you can do whatever you want with. And we've got more LCD screens going around the room. We have this over there, which is telling you total blocks on there. And we come across there telling you your speed and acceleration and another button for the lights. Over here, we've got a programmable block, but I've disabled scripts in the world. Why did I disable scripts in this world? I don't know. Over here, we've got some more LCD screens telling us our total power and our location. So there will be the scripts that are currently not enabled. Then over here, another programmable block and another button for the lights on the inside. And this is our main cockpit where we can view up as some more LCD screens and whatnot. Coming through this door here, we're now going to loop back around past these programmable blocks and batteries. We can view down at our medical bay at some cryopods that I did miss. They were just above me over to here where we've got a air vent airlock door where we can walk through and come to the outside, which we can close up like that. And then over here, another button for the lights on and off. We've got some more chairs going around here for your passengers to sit on and all the way around over to here. We've got a bunch of fancy buttons to press. So these are going to be for the programmable blocks just to refresh them. Going into this seat, we once again got another Control seat for the guns and cameras. Then we'll just loop all the way back around to where we just were. Coming up and around to here, we then have another airlock to enter the upper areas. So around to here, we then have the upper hangar, which then take us to our elevator. Coming around to here and up the steps and opening this up, we'll then reach the top of the rover like so. Now let's go on the elevator for a little ride. So over here, we got a bunch of buttons. We can then open and close the hangar on top. We can then lift and lower the elevator. We then turn on and off our visual flashing lights and turn on and off the hangar lights. Around this room we can see some modules, the hangar doors, some small reactors and a camera over there to view who's playing with the elevator. So let's hop onto here and press this button and we shall raise up and go to the top of the vehicle. So all the way to the top we can start seeing the guns up here. There's the rocket turret, and we will smoothly, very smoothly, get to here. So this is how a small ship can come and connect up to from the top. You can be very strict who connects you and who doesn't by lowering and raising this platform. But still, it's a very nice thing to have. And one final test. Let's see what happens if we were to accidentally close the hangar doors onto the elevator. My god, look what's happening there. Oh god, the whole vehicle is going. <laughs> 
Wow, that, that just chewed straight through there. I think I finally realised how the piston drive works. I think I know how it actually properly works. By crushing vehicles in there, you get the force of the blocks continuously being held in place by an object. So in that case, it would be the doors. And in this case, it would be the hangar doors. And it just creates a massive motion. Before we do that, before we do that, I did split this in half so we could get a much better look at this. So if I was to come all the way around to here and put my super spotlight on, there we go, we can see a direct split of the vehicle. So we can see the hydrogen tank, the cargo containers, where the refineries are, the inside of the hangar, in there, down at the medical bay, the actual part where the solar panel is. And on this side, we can see the bridge and the doors leading to it, some more cargo containers, and some more modules and whatnot. I thought that was quite an interesting little thing. Just to split it straight down the middle. Yes, with that all done and out of the way, I'm sure this vehicle over here has settled down. Let's go and give this a little drive around by breaking into the top. So getting into the cockpit, we've got a few options. Number one will be to raise or lower the ramp at the back. Number two will be close the hangar door right behind it. Number three will be to raise or lower our elevator. Number four is for the hangar doors on top. Number five will be to turn on and off the visuals of our elevator. And number seven is our rocket launcher at the front. On tab number two, we've got our antennas and beacons. And tab number three, four, and five have nothing else on. So let's go and drive this thing around. So driving this thing around, we've got a nice slow vehicle to wander around the surface of Mars or whatever planet you are currently on. We don't go too fast, so there's no risk of ever crashing. And of course, we're a vehicle, so we stop almost instantly. Got a nice bit of protection, a nice bit of renewable power, and a nice hangar to store some vehicles in. And turning is quite good as well. It'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with this vehicle yourself. I highly recommend you do because it is a fantastic mobile base for you to play around with in survival mode or even use it as a starting base for a survival mode gameplay. So thank you all for watching and I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.